In Affinity Photo version 2, all kinds of mesh warped designs can be created from gradients, images, text, etc. This is from a gradient. So how to do this? Let's just remove that. And I'm going to start from a very basic shape, an ellipse. So create a shape and it's filled with a gradient. Now the gradient, you can create those quite easily. Please check out my videos on how to create gradient swatches, how to apply them to shapes. So once you've got your grade, and of course, you will have a few already added in your swatches panel, and that's in the window menu and swatches. Now apply effects. So filters and blur, and I'm gonna go with motion blur. I really like motion blur. Now don't push that shape be on the edge, otherwise you'll get a sharp edge coming through. So I'm just gonna now just move that motion blur. Motion blur is great, you can use the panel, or interactively modify it, just like that. And I want nice strong reds, and that's probably why it's best to work with a gradient with lots of different colorful stops in it to create lovely colors like that. And click apply. So the end result, of course, will be different for you, depending on your gradient or image that you're using. You could use, as I say, an image. Now you can warp it, and you can use the mesh warp tool here. So mesh warp tool, or you can go to the filters menu and use it there. So filter and distort and mesh warp. And you can see this bounding box applied to your design. And you can warp design, you can drag it up and down, distort it in all kinds of ways. But also you can double click inside as well. So double click and you can do that multiple times. And I'm just gonna do it through. Now you'll see what's happened. I've created a very uneven mesh. And a really good quick trick for this or tip is just to go to reset. And what it does, it resets it back to an even grid. So reset, doesn't remove the nodes. And I'm just gonna go with about that number. You can create too many and it becomes too fine, find it very awkward to work with. So just go with say five, or five, five by five or six by six. And then you can select and just drag upwards. And then you can distort this design. And you can see as you do it, drag out, and create these lovely streaks of color coming away from your image, your blurred. Now, sometimes you'll notice what happens. It goes like that. Not really too keen on that, but that's the way it just cuts off. And you can just drag those out, drag that out. And you can just keep, go to the edge and then go there. It's probably best to work from the edge and then go inside. Again, just drag that out, drag that out. Otherwise you will end up seeing these and sometimes you get them anyway, you'll get that. Not ideal. But you can always apply it a couple of times. So just do that. And you can also go along here, this line here. You don't have to use the nodes. I'm using this, but you can easily just use that. And you can see as you do that, you can drag that in or out like that. And you can distort it in countless ways. And of course, you can also select multiple points and drag it out like that. So you don't have to just select just one. So once you're happy with your design, and I'm just gonna go with this, but I could, of course, create multiple different shapes and designs. But what I can do now, got this design, I can always warp it again. So I can just resize it, reposition it. But also I can go up here, filters and repeat mesh warp, or go, of course, create mesh warp again. So apply that. And you can see you can create distortion like that. Or go to the Mesh Warp tool. Select that. And again, distort that design. And again, double click, double click, and add some additional points and drag that out. Or reset. Again, not too many, just add a few. But you can just drag this out so it just distorts in all kinds of ways. And again, just pull that out. Maybe not like that. Let's just drag that one out and so on. You can see the end result there of warping your design. Literally billions of different designs can be created just by doing this, just by distorting the design, distorting design there, and distorting design there, and click and apply. But now what you can do is just a layer, so you can duplicate this design. So move tool, hold down the ultra option key, or just go to the layer menu and duplicate, and you've got that design there. And you can resize it, so just move it around, rotate it, reposition it, 
maybe use another distortion. But you can also go to the layers panel, go over here and just down here. Maybe go for difference, maybe over overlay or lighten. And you can see you can create a variety of different designs simply by just running through that. Maybe go for negation. I think that's always a lovely one as well. And you can see as you move that around, create a different effect. Go to layer and you can then merge them. So merge visible and they will both be merged into one layer. You've still got the other layers, so you can always do exactly the same as before. Just go down here, go for negation again. So you can create yet another design, which again, always go to layer and merge visible. And you of course repeat that multiple times to create all kinds of combinations just with that shape. But again, go to the mesh warp, distort that design, move it around, double click, add some points, drag that out. Maybe add three or four, drag it down that way. And you can see you can create yet again more unusual designs. Again, probably best to work from the edge and then inside and drag that out. So it just becomes a nice sort of stretching out from that central part. And then click apply. Once you've got your design, well, what you can then do, of course, is you maybe use it as a pattern source. I mean, I love using pattern sources or use it with additional filters. So you don't have to use obviously just the mesh. You can always then go to filters, maybe go to distort and down to mirror or deform. So just use that and distort it using the deform. And again, create even more unusual shapes from your design there. Something like that. Click apply. But again, it's just a pixel layer. So layer and new pattern layer from selection. And then you can repeat that and you can see your design there. And of course, it's a layer, layer, and you can duplicate. So you can just combine it, move it around like that. Got your designs, layer, and again, merge visible. So it all becomes one complete layer, which of course can be distorted using the mesh warp. So go over here to the mesh warp tool and again, double click and enter some points and you can stretch and distort in all kinds of unique and weird and wonderful ways to create some truly abstract, weird distortions, which again can be stretched in and out underneath to create that sort of design. Again, click apply and always filter and repeat mesh warp. You can always distort it again. I always love to repeat mesh warp because sometimes out of the blue, it creates a really unique design. You think, wow, that is just great. But also it's just a layer. So you've got there the layer selected. You can go down here and click layer effects. So you can always go for say 3D and just add a 3D effect to it. Or maybe go for outer shadow. All kinds of additional effects can be added to it as well to create very interesting designs. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much.